Hey, this is Sam from MParticle, and today I'm going to walk you through how to set up the MParticle SDK to capture all of your app data. Okay, here we are on the MParticle website, and I'm going to sign up and create a new account. Today I'm going to do everything from scratch. Okay, so now I have an account and I can create my app. And when I hit continue, MParticle will create my new app and I'll be presented with the quick start screen. Today I'm going to show you iOS. I'll select iOS. And there are a couple ways you can implement the SDK. The way that I prefer would be to use CocoaPods. So this way with CocoaPods, you don't have to maintain the mparticle binary in your own source control system. You can instead reference it in your build script that creates your app. Just to show you how easy it is, I'm going to create a brand new app. So I'll move over to Xcode and I'll create a new project. I'll basically just select all the defaults here. Okay, so now that I have an app, the next step is to add mParticle as a dependency on the app before I even write any code. Back at the quick start, we see we need to add a line to our pod spec. Since I just created this app from scratch, I actually need to initiate my pod spec. Okay, so I'll paste the dependency right here. Save it. And download the SDK. So at this point, the CocoaPod framework will look to the general CocoaPod repo and will download the mparticle pod. Okay, so I see we have the latest version 2.15 as of this video. And it's very important if you're using CocoaPod to open the workspace file for now on. So I will close my project and then reopen the workspace. So at this point, I have an app uh, that is just a basic Hello World app, and it has mParticle specified as a dependency. The great thing about a CocoaPod is that it actually brings in all of the other dependencies that mParticle might have. So our library requires and leverages a few different frameworks on the iPhone. And as such, you'd regularly need to add those to your project. But in this case, since the CocoaPod specifies those other frameworks as dependency, they are automatically added to your project. The next step is to copy our import statement. This just makes it so that we can reference the mparticle class itself. I will open up my app delegate file and paste that in right there. The next step is to copy and paste just a little bit of code to initiate the SDK. It's important that the mparticle SDK is initiated whenever your app launches. This makes it so that the SDK can manage user sessions and other important analytical points. So at this point, we have a simple app referencing mparticle. And our app, whenever it launches, will initiate mparticle, passing our key in secret. So at this point, I think I'm actually ready to test it. I'll move back to the quick start and hit test. This little utility will let you know if you have indeed followed the quick start steps correctly. It will search for data as you send it in. I'll move back to Xcode and fire up our new app in an emulator. So as that builds, I'll get all ready here with an emulator ready to go. And there we have it. The mparticle SDK has been initiated successfully and the platform has discovered an event. So that is the bare minimum. That really only took a few minutes. And at this point, the mparticle SDK will be capturing all sorts of interesting user data, letting you optimize in all sorts of ways. But the real power of mparticle comes when you decide to activate that data, notably by forwarding that data to 
third-party services. So to that end, I will now activate a third-party service. And Particle supports a number of third-party services. So I'll move over to the services section and see what we can add. So here are some of the service providers that MParticle supports. Today I'm going to choose the very popular Google Analytics. I'll just click on Google Analytics and it will add an entry for my iOS app that I've just created. Now I've actually already created a Google Analytics property. If you have a currently existing Google Analytics property, you can just use that. Otherwise you can just create a new one. So all it takes for me to get this set up is to copy and paste my tracking ID. In order to do that, I'm going to go over to Google Analytics. Here we are. Copy my tracking ID and paste it. Hit save and my app data will immediately start flowing to Google Analytics. And that's all it takes, no code change. But just to prove it to you, I'm gonna move over to the event stream and show you data going in and out of the platform. Okay, so to see if this worked, I'm going to reopen my iOS app. And we should see as the data flows both into MParticle and out to Google Analytics. And there we go. There's our user in New York. Today we've created a new app, created a new account in MParticle and added that account to our new app. We've then manipulated the data on the server side to forward it to a third party service. There are many more services that MParticle integrates with and the key point is that with MParticle you're in control of your data and you can forward it anywhere you wish without writing any new code. Thanks for listening.